President Trump insisted in our interview yesterday that he will be vindicated in his claim that President Obama spied on him, wiretapped him during the 2016 campaign. Why not wait to tweet about it until you can prove it? Don't because, you because, value well, your because, words when you can't provide well, evidence? Well, because the New York Times wrote about it. You know, not that I respect the New York Times. I call it the failing New York Times. But they did write on January 20th using the word wiretap. Other people have come out with... Uh, right, but you're statements. the president. You have the ability to gather all the evidence I do, you want. I do, but I think that, frankly, we have a lot right now. And I, I think if you watch... Uh, if you watched uh, the Brett Bear and what he was saying and what he was talking about and how he mentioned the word wiretap, you would feel very confident that you could mention the name. He mentioned it, and other people have mentioned it. But if you take a look at some of the things written about wiretapping and eavesdropping, and don't forget, when I say wiretap, those words were in quotes. That really covers, because wiretapping is pretty old-fashioned stuff, but that really covers surveillance and many other things. And nobody ever talks about the fact that it was in quotes, but that's a very important thing. But wiretap covers a lot of different things. I think you're going to find some very interesting items coming to the forefront over the next two weeks. Well, author, columnist, and American thinking man Charles Krauthammer joins us now. Charles, thanks a lot for coming on. I guess what bothers me about that is I think that it's overwhelmingly likely that electronic communications from Trump advisors were swept up by American intelligence agencies during the campaign, either for good reasons or bad. But I think it likely happened. But I think the White House's unwillingness to prove it distracts from that. It undervalues or, or undermines their case, but also it detracts from like a conversation we should be having about surveillance. And it makes you question the credibility of the president on anything. Right. You know, he really should stop digging. We have now had the heads of the Senate and House Intelligence Committees, a Democrat and a Republican, come out and say they haven't seen a shred of evidence that this is true. There is nobody in the administration who will say this is true. They'll all say we have to investigate. Why? As you said in the question, you're the president. You pick up the phone. You call the head of the CIA, the FBI, uh, the, uh, the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence. You've got the answer at your fingertip. You don't need an investigation. Look, there's not a person in Washington who thinks that there actually was a wiretap, that this is true. The president, look, he seems to have a belief in conspiracy theories. This is, after all, a man who said that Ted Cruz's father was involved in some way with Lee Harvey Oswald. That's pretty Twilight Zone stuff. So this is a lot less kooky than that. But there is no evidence. But as you say... It detracts from the fact that we do know that there was legal wiretapping of Russian officials that might have swept up Americans in it, and there could have been, I would go one step beyond that and say there could have been improper handling. When, when Americans are swept up in that kind of legal wiretap of a foreigner, the intelligence agencies are supposed to, to, uh, to uh, cover up and to disguise the identity of the American to protect them. There could have been mishandling of this, in the, particularly in the case of General Flynn, and that is, I think, an issue that ought to be raised. So don't but we know that that happened? From. And I agree that, it, I yeah. agree that it detracts from the imprecision of his words detracts from it, but all of us should be horrified that a private citizen, he was a private citizen then, was surveilled by the U.S. government and then destroyed, whatever you think of Flynn, by the leak of the transcript. I mean, isn't that a big deal? And I think you could even say, if you want to talk conspiracies here, there appears to have been, and here's where the New York Times, the failing New York Times reported, that there appeared to have been a relaxing of the standards for releasing the names of the Americans who should be disguised and protected at the end of the Obama administration and the spreading of that name so that Flynn, for example, ended up being exposed in a way he shouldn't have been. But I think it's really odd here, Tucker. We have two conspiracy theories. A, the wiretapping of Trump Tower. That didn't happen, and we're chasing our tails on this. The other is the collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, the alleged collusion that Democrats have been jumping on. There is no evidence of that either. We just had today Morell, Mike Morell, who is sort of a pro-Clinton former deputy head of the CIA, saying there's no, there's smoke, but there's no fire here. Right. And the head of the DNI, Clapper, a guy who was at odds with Trump, 
had no reason to favor Trump. He says he hasn't seen a shred of evidence. So you have two conspiracy theories, huge investigations. The town is swept up in a frenzy on two accusations where there is no evidence. Yeah. Meanwhile, the debt ceiling came and went, uh, which is actually actual Last question. Every time I talk to people on the intelligence committees who are supposed to be, who are charged with oversight of the intelligence agencies, they always strike me more as fanboys and defenders of those agencies rather than as people who are acting as a backstop against overreach and protecting our interests as the public. Why is that? Why the Stockholm Syndrome? Well, they're not libertarians like you. Well, I'm not really a libertarian. I'm just, I'm an American who doesn't want people reading my email without a good reason. Well, for them, look, I, let me speculate since I don't know. But it's never stopped me before. <laughs> and I am a psychiatrist, so I'm allowed to, uh, to do this kind of stuff. You know, they probably get exposed to all kinds of hair-raising intelligence. Yes. All kinds of weird plots we never hear of, scary plots that are stopped at the last minute. So imagine you're hearing that every week. So you might be slightly more inclined to see the sacrifice of privacy, given the fact that you're exposed to the threats out there. So in drawing the line... No, I think, I think that's a, a totally that fair be, point. That might be the reason they do that. Yeah. Charles Krauthammer, always with the right answer. Thank you. I try.